very important things that you have to keep in the mind. Okay? Uh, do not forget them anytime. So keep it in the mind and that, that will be working as a perspective for you in this case. One, there are two counts. The one count relates to the advisory opinion looked for by Security Council. And why Security Council look for advisory opinion of International Court of Justice? Because Mandoba moved the resolution to the General Assembly of the uh, United Nations where this was rejected by most developing economies. But this is still involves very serious issue of humanitarian crisis because these islands are in a probability of submergence. So, International Court of Justice has to give a verdict or opinion uh, to the request made by the Security Council. Okay? And then there is another issue which is a dispute between uh, Himalayan uh, Kingdom of Himalayan State and Hindustan. And the issue directly relates to the victim of natural disasters earthquake which forced uh, flocks of peoples to migrate to cross border from uh, uh, Himalayan uh, state to Hindustan and Hindustan has refused to grant to them the status of refugee. Therefore they have become illegal migrants. This is very important. If Hindustan recognizes their refugee status then they do not become illegal migrants. If Hindustan does not recognize status to them that of refugee then these people can be defined as illegal migrants and they being treated as illegal migrants come within the domestic jurisdiction of Hindustan and might be according to the domestic law they remain subject to even prosecution under the domestic law of Hindustan so they become to uh, some extent some sort of criminals. So what Kingdom of Himalayan State demands to Hindustan is to recognize their uh, refugee status because they have not willingly moved to the cross border. They are compelled by uh, the natural disasters because their houses have been broken, their shelters, their shelters uh, have gone, they have no food and their country itself is in a very vulnerable situation because of devastating heat by the devastating heat by the earthquake. So it is requesting uh, in this time to recognize their refugee status not because these people have fear to stay in their country. Going back to the country they have the same honorable citizenship regard of the nation but then they don't have place to live and they don't have uh, food to eat and therefore the country is will be in a problem. So now the question is like what does implicitly mean recognition of refugee status in this situation is the uh, call for respect, protect and fulfill human right obligation by Hindustan is prescribed by international human right instrument to which Hindustan is a party. So this is a call for implicitly, this is a call for fulfillment, protection and respect of the Human right, uh, human right law provision uh, under the international human right instrument. Second issue. Now, how you move in the case with the perspective in the mind is like the issue of uh, re, uh, uh, the issue of recognizing refugee status to the climate or the natural disaster victim is the main concern. Okay, but what is existing international law? existing international law regarding refugee excluding asylum seeker is refugee status convention okay what this convention defines refugee is a person who has crossed border for seeking protection from the receiving country because there is a imminent danger in his country for his persecution on the basis of his faith, uh, political ideology, <coughs> or several such things. What is difference between refusage, that means political refusage, 
<coughs> and refuse is created by climate change disaster or natural disaster uh, uh, natural disasters like earthquake is uh, that uh, in political refugee uh, situation the state or the government of uh, rep uh, refugees are antagonistic to them so their life is not protected by their state but here in the uh, situation of uh, natural disasters and climate change their state is not against them the state rather is unable to fulfill respect and protect their human rights because the state itself is in a serious humanitarian crisis okay this is very clear which you need to be very clear but there is a similarity what is similarity in both cases is like whether a person cross border for the political reason or whether a person cross border because of the natural disaster in both situations, the receiving country has obligation to protect, respect and fulfill human rights of that individual. If he has crossed because of the political uh, reason, he will or she will be entitled to get human rights protected under the refugee uh, status convention. Whereas, uh, whereas the person will also be entitled to be benefited by the rights guaranteed by ICCPR, ICESCR, CAT, and several other human rights instruments, including CRC, CEDA, and other. When person have crossed across the border for natural disaster or the climate uh, cl uh, cl uh, climate change uh, victimization, the person instead of being treated illegal immigrants should be treated with uh, notion of humanitarian crisis okay what is humanitarian crisis this is not a choice for the people they have not cross border for their choice they have compelled by force majeure that means uh, unavoidable situation there is no other option according to iccpr every individual has right to life so to protect and safeguard their life is a primary interest of these people so therefore no border can prevent them to protect their life so they have been here by force by coercion <coughs> and this coercion is created by force majority that is beyond their capacity they cannot prevent that because natural disaster like earthquake is not within capacity of these people to be prevented therefore if they have to respect or protect their life they have to cross the border so on this ground because they have crossed the border for right to life the situation cannot be converted according to the domestic law of the receiving country into illegal immigrants so what is very important here is like getting their rights recognized by the receiving country itself implicitly means a treatment equivalent to the refugee under uh, refugee status convention so this is a gray area this is where there are two different sets of international law one set of international law stands to protect the right of people under the human rights and humanitarian crisis on the other hand receiving country is obliged to protect the right of the people under the uh, uh, under under the uh, refugees uh, uh, status convention now is it possible that people who have been who have been in a situation of humanitarian crisis be treated as refugee is one question or let me repeat it. Is it possible uh, for those people who have been living in a humanitarian crisis be treated as refugees? Is one question. Other way, does uh, humanitarian crisis or people living in a, a state of humanitarian crisis as human rights violation situation receive due protection of their rights to life by the receiving country automatically results 
in the refugee status so there are two questions no answer so therefore this is a gray area so now there are two counts again in the one count security council seems to be quite concerned because if UN does not positively intervene in this situation and does not regard climate change victim or the natural disaster victim who have crossed the border of their nation as refugees they will be in a pernicious situation of criminalizing their crossing the border and becoming criminals which was beyond their uh, capacity therefore security council seems to be quite concerned if this happens in the wake of the massive climate change across the world the migration of the people is very big millions of people have been affected by the change climate so over the world uh, across the world millions of people will be subjected to the criminalization of the domestic law and therefore domestic law will come stark contradiction with the international law and that will very terribly spoils the international order that is the reason security council though it is not very explicit in compromise you have to say this okay though it is not very specifically mentioned in the compromise but we can understand we can understand from the insights presented by the compromise itself. So that's why Security Council is overwhelmingly concerned and therefore it has put forward a request to this honorable court to provide an advisory opinion and therefore this court is in a very crucial moment right now. This court is sitting today to make a history. This is a okay? This court is sitting today to make a history, your honor. This court is meeting here not just to fulfill a formality. This court is here today to make a history and this court is now creating a new jurisprudence. A new jurisprudence of international law. How it's going to create it? By giving advisory opinion to the Security Council, very specifically and very categorically stating that climate change victim and natural disasters victim situation is nonetheless less important or less crucial than the situation of people who fear, who, who, who fear or who have likely to subject to the political persecution because in both cases what is at stake is the right to life if in the political situation person do not cross the border his life will be in stake if these people are not provided due human right treatment by the receiving country, their life will be in a stake too. So the court today is taking right to life as the landing station. The court today is, is it's supposed to take the right to life is a station from which the court will deal this issue. Therefore, uh, this is very important. Okay. In the another count, in the another count, which is a uh, dispute between two countries. Again, in this case, issues also. 10,000 people who have crossed border from uh, Kingdom of Himalayan State to Hindustan have been rejected by Hindustan to be recognized as refugees, means Hindustan is not going to treat them with uh, human rights, an humanitarian crisis. Implicitly, what can be inferred is that and this time is interested to prosecute them and uh, treat them as illegal immigrants therefore they will have a serious situation so they are in a very uh, difficult situation uh, the request of uh, Himalayan, uh, King, kingdom of himalayan state is outrightly rejected by hindustan and this is already resulting in a situation of trafficking a lot of uh, uh, people and also sexual violence or sexual exploitation of people so there are two cases two, two, two individuals who have terribly suffered because of the failure of the Hindustan since Hindustan failed to recognize their refugee status these people became vulnerable and they have been sexually exploited by a diplomat of Mandaba and this issue is also in consideration of this honorable court 
in which against the spirit of humanitarian law and international human rights law, in this time have allowed this criminal diplomat to uh, go to his country by okay free passes okay okay free passes to claim so okay okay therefore it is not prosecuting when that is right it's not prosecuting so there is a danger this is your perspective it should be in your mind so every question when they read should be answered within this perspective all questions should be answered within this so manipulate and answer them so for example the question is like what do you uh, uh, see difference between uh, uh, refugees and asylum seeker are these people asylum seeker <coughs> if there is a question the, 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 it doesn't make difference don't say this is asylum seeker this is refugee it doesn't make a make difference your honor whether they become asylum seeker or refusing before they are recognized so because they are the victim of natural disasters they have crossed the border for force majority so whether they are treated as asylum seeker or whether they are treated as refusing question is not what is their political situation the question is not important what is their political status question is they should be able to receive all those human rights guaranteed by international human rights instrument to which in this time is a party okay this is a so do, this is a very confusing case therefore don't make a declaratory answer don't make a declaratory statement mm -hmm. all the time very implicit now they will uh, now, now, now they will they may ask a question if the International Court of Justice, or this court uh, agrees to your claim that uh, uh, natural disaster victims should be treated as refugees. Already there are 144 million disaster victims going everywhere in the world. So what would be the order? Okay, don't say they should be treated or not. Okay, again, don't make a declaratory statement. What you have to say is like, yes, that's true. So that's the reason Security Council has asked the opinion advisor to you honorable courts, your excellency. Because this issue is becoming very serious. But whatever serious the issue might be, what about the number of the people crossing because of the climate change and natural disasters to other country? What is fundamental issue is like, even every people from each country moves to other, other country by this, their human right cannot be compromised. So the question again is human right. So the figure, the figure does not make a difference with regard to the human rights okay they might ask you another questions is it possible for international court of justice to clog these two issues and make a judgment okay question very good question your honor so this is a privilege of the court don't say yes or no okay say that it's a privilege of the court this court is the supreme international interpreter of the world that's why this is called the world court so international community will be obliged to follow your judgment and your opinion or the jurisprudence you have created as a guidelines to the development of international court. So if this court will uh, take initiatives to define natural disasters or climate change victims are the people able to enjoy refugee status the all has to follow it if the court concludes that no they should not be then again international law should be evolved by somehow might be by treaty or the convention it may take for a long time but this is therefore a very momentum uh, time for the honorable court to intervene in this issue to the interest of the climate change and the natural disaster victim and then create a new international law which might largely be helpful to rationalize the world and make provision or make situation uh, for the better situation of the respect of human rights in the world again this way then they might ask you another question the question would be like uh, uh, 
Why uh, Kingdom of Himalayan states requesting their refugee status in Hindustan instead of calling international assistance and gets its people back to the country? Might be a question to you. The answer would be little declaratory again international law. Okay, what is declaratory answer is like when people have been forced to cross the border, 10,000, your honor, uh, you can imagine, comprobing yourself, very clearly states that uh, the country itself, the state, uh, kingdom of Himalayan states, is ravaged by devastating earthquake, and then it's a very uh, developing state. Infrastructure and everything is in a very, very uh, situation of rumbles, so the country in this situation is not able to protect interest of every citizen because everybody requires service at this point. So, sure. these people have crossed to the border, have not made any crime because these two countries have shared border. These two countries have been living for a long time and in crisis, both of them in the past has a history of support with each other. That seems because though compromise does not eat, very explicit, but being neighbor, uh, the compromise does not state any problem in the past, means the, pro the relation was very smooth. Therefore, there are two ways. Factually, de facto, it's a responsibility of neighbor, de jure, the resolution 2010-1, provision 17, very clearly says that it is the duty of each party to support or uh, uh, extend supports to the, uh, the, the, the victims of natural disasters. So there is a resolution. Though it's a soft law, it creates a very strong morality and states are not out of the moral bindings, bindingness. Okay, that's what. And then you have to refer to Gurera case. Uh, then you also have to refer to uh, other case and again question is like whether these two issue can be clubbed or not in the Nicaragua case the court on the one hand had given advisory opinion on the other hand has decided the case on the marriage so there, it's already a practice of the International Court of Justice simultaneously decide so Clothing here does not mean that court can give one judgment. No, that's not possible according to the sta according to the uh, ICJ statute. So, court should give op advisory opinion to the Security Council, whereas court has to adjudicate the claims of uh, the state of uh, Kingdom of Himalayan states against Ingistan in terms of its merit. Okay. So now, question is like, what is very important. Your honor is like if you make a if you make a if you make an um, advisory opinion against refugee status to the climate change and natural disasters to the Security Council, the claim of the claim of Kingdom of Himalayan states against Ingistan becomes fruitless, and then these people will converts by the judgment of the court into illegal immigrants and therefore that way uh, 10,000 people will be criminalized uh, not because they have committed a wrong but because the natural disasters has forced them to seek refuge in, in this time and that was not for the luxury to protect their right to life so seeking to protect right to life here becomes a crime. If you, if you, uh, if you decide, if the case is decided in favor of the 10,000 people's refugee status, but then advisory opinion would be against the refugee status, then again, uh, particular issue particular issue between two countries might be temporarily adjusted mm -hmm. but international jurisprudence will be failing therefore either supreme uh, either icj should 
make a judgment in favor of uh, mm. Kingdom of Himalayan states claim that automatically results positive advisory opinion to the Security Council or if the court extends positive advisory opinion to the Security Council the case adjudication cannot go against the Himalayan state. Therefore these two issues are inseparably connected. So sure. advisory opinion would be benefiting the international community by creating a new international law where it Ingistan and it is uh, <coughs> uh, the Kingdom of Himalayan states dispute will be benefiting not Himalayan state but 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Human rights should be protected. So therefore they are complementary. So they are not clocked but they, they share the same international law. And the ground of the both, the, the, the law applicable or the law that decides the merit of both cases are ICCPR, ICACR, CEDA, CRC, CAT and many other international human rights instruments to which court also have a very very strong respect in the past. In every case, whether it is Carrefour Channel case, whether it is Nicaragua case, or it is Fisheries case, in everywhere, when court passed the judgment, it always looked for the interest of the people. Okay, therefore, you have to uh, look into it. So, answer is given, clubbing issue. They might also ask you a question, and the question would be like, uh, uh, how Ingistan can be able to prosecute Mandoba's diplomat and put into jail because there is a Vienna Convention. Again, don't say yes or no. No declaratory answer. Again, here. What you have to do is like, Vienna Convention, Vienna Treaty on Pri uh, Diplomatic Privileges of uh, uh, the uh, Ambassadors and uh, Cal uh, Diplomatic Council is very important in peace of international law. If it does not exist, international relations would be fragile. If the life and the property of the diplomat is not protected in the receiving country, that would create a danger to the life of the diplomat and nobody would be interested for that. Sure, these rights, these privileges have been created to protect the right to life and property and the freedom of diplomats. So, the Vienna Convention itself implicitly respects human rights. So Vienna Convention itself implicitly is a international human rights law. But guaranteeing and safeguarding diplomatic privileges does not become a license to commit crime against international human rights law. So people who have been who have been forced to cross the border from Kingdom of Himalayan State to Ingistan comprises a lot of children and women who are vulnerable. Seeking uh, human rights protection from Ingistan and international community. In such situation, if a diplomat commits sexual exploitation of a woman and victim, he is not violating the law of Ingistan. Take it seriously. He is not violating law of Ingistan and Kingdom of Himalayan state. He is violating the right of individual. And that right is granted to this individual by ICCPR, CEDA, and CRC. And according to Vienna Convention, implicitly, as an issue of just coggins, okay, as an issue of just coggin, diplomat is obliged to respect this international these international instruments which protect human rights so our diplomat cannot violate international human rights convention and in number of cases latest case i will give you the case later rape has been defined or torture and torture is just cocaine therefore the diplomat has violated just cause. Okay? No declaratory answer. Again, explanation of international law. I think these five questions are very 
very very prominent question with you within these five questions there will be number of yes no questions to you don't say yes no answer little non-declaratory statement okay so this is what now you can hear repeatedly now what you will do first introduction second theme the basic theme perspective how this case has occurred in the case of Mandaba, this is submergence. In the case of Kingdom of Himalayan State, natural disasters and victimization of countless of people. Perspective, then court theory. Okay, this court is going to address or intervene in such a situation, in such a great situation of international law, where. Uh, refugee status conventions and its privileges uh, have been in question and the major question is like whether this convention the privileges or the claims on this uh, uh, convention are applicable to the disaster victims or the climate change victim or not because the right of life is in a stake here so therefore the court has issued a very momentous time 